set a new goal in 2020, maybe back in January as the new, new decade unfolded, or maybe like I did, you set some new goals as our stay at home orders were issued and we entered an unprecedented season of fear and uncertainty. What progress are you making on those goals? As I prepared for this speech, I felt like my journey paralleled the infamous Aesop's fable of the tortoise and the hare. In that fable, the tortoise, consistent, calm, is challenged by the hare as to why or how he can ever accomplish a goal. How can he get anything done moving so slow? The tortoise challenges the hare to a race. The hare, confident in his speed and his ability to win, rushes ahead. Rushes so far ahead that he decides to pull over to the side of the road and take a nap. Way back is the tortoise, confident, consistent, moving at his own pace. In fact, he overtakes the hare, sleeping alongside the road, and nears the finish line. Yes, the hare does wake up, but only to realize he's too far behind to overtake the tortoise and win the race and emphasize how fast and strong he is. When I raised my hand to say, I would love to be on the stage warrior stage, I felt like a tortoise, confident, consistent in my, my race, and ready to share my message. And then over the last few weeks and months, I felt a little bit more like the hare, waking up each morning, ready to take advantage of this season of opportunity, or at least that's what I've been calling it. But by early afternoon, I needed a nap. And some days I counted the minutes until I felt like I could just punch out for the day and say good enough. My message to you today is about building core habits to create confidence in your life. I dreamed that this could be a season of new business opportunities and even more amazing habits around fitness, wellness, nutrition, sleep, because I was 100% from home, seemingly without any distractions or temptation that would take me off point. In fact, in late March, I set 10 more new goals for this season of opportunity. Have you found yourself being a little bit like the hare, racing around, setting new goals, signing up for new classes, saying yes to new opportunities? It reminds me, in fact, of another season. We do sometimes sign up again and again in our life to learn the same lesson. In late 2012, I made a decision. I was working internationally for Mary Kay Cosmetics, traveling to Brazil to share their marketing plan. They speak Portuguese in Brazil, and I knew it would be an advantage to my business to learn the language, or at least the basic structure of it. It's also January, and I lived in a very cold northwestern state, and I thought, I am going to set up my bike in my office, and I am going to change my time of awakening by two hours to two hours earlier. I'm going to hop on that training bike, and I am going to listen to how to speak fluent Portuguese 
every single day on recording. It was a great plan. My husband set up my training bike in my office. I had the CDs on how to learn Portuguese purchased in January 2013 opened. What I can tell you is that it was not how I thought it would go. Guess how many times I accomplished those three goals that I had put together. Exactly zero. The bike became a purse rack. My fitness goals never took off. And I decided Portuguese would be a language I would learn in another lifetime. By nature, I am a goal-oriented achiever. And I have set goals again and again. Perhaps you have as well. Perhaps you've got caught in the excitement of having an opportunity to set new goals and be proactive in this season. I have set and failed at just as many goals as I have achieved. I wanted to share with you what I learned, take you on a little virtual tour of two pillars that I think create your success when it comes to building new habits for core confidence. I like to call it the virtual tour inside Alice's head and into my physical world. First, the tour inside my head falls under the umbrella that I would call mindset. Our mindset can often be the place new habits flourish or fall apart. My mindset is condensed into one-liners. One-liners that might be written on my bathroom mirror in dry erase marker as post-it notes around my computer monitor edges or even on the dashboard of my car. I'll share them with you as they may support your mindset in creating powerful habits. One, I remind myself that the success of goals can be their priority. One inch wide, 10 miles deep. One inch wide, 10 miles deep. Having a clear, single, specific focus goal can rise all of your goals. A rising tide lifts all the boats. I choose one single goal to focus on. Fall in love with the process. When you love the process, you won't want to take a nap in the middle of your day. You won't count the minutes until you feel you can leave your office. When you love the process, you'll never want to quit your business or your life. It would be like the tortoise jumping on a wagon or a car to catch a ride, going down the road to try to catch the hare. That's not his process. How do you know your processes? How do you learn where you are the most powerful and where you may need to pivot in a different direction? I found that journaling helped me create that self-awareness and that reflection of what do I love, what brings me energy, and what makes me want to take a nap. Number three, this is for the perfectionist listening to this talk. 80% can be your victory. There is so much power in getting to 80%. 
And yet those of us that are perfectionists think if it's not 100%, it can't be at all. I think of eating clean. In a week with 21 meals, if you allow yourself that 20% margin, you have four opportunities to eat food that might be a little bit out of plan, but you are 80% compliant and that can move the needle. It's only hard till it's easy. It's only hard till it's easy. Even if we love the process, we might find that we need to find a way to embrace the hard. And you choose your hard. When I was learning to eat in a different way and how to meal prep, it took focus and it took discipline and it took so much energy. I had to reprogram myself after 45 years how to eat differently. But within 18 months, I couldn't remember how I used to eat. I couldn't remember very clearly that I would set the goal to eat out every day for lunch. There was a new normal and it went from hard, 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 a little bit less hard, and then it became easy and it became without any effort. It became the new normal. It's like the difference between going uphill and going downhill and then being able to see the finish line. Last, stay on your path. The last mindset I have is stay on your path. The only failure in creating a new habit and a new lifestyle is quitting. You can start a diet in the middle of a bag of potato chips. And you can restart a diet there as well. Quitting is the only failure. So those are my mindset. Run your race make a change tips. And maybe you're listening to this speech because you recognize that you're ready to make some shifts, that you wanna create new habits for core confidence. Let me share another story with you in contrast to my Portuguese biking, getting up early fail. Two years later, I found myself in the season of being an empty nester. With a lot more time available, I decided to pursue a goal to compete in a bodybuilding competition. I didn't know what it would take. I only knew what the end result looked like because I had been secretly stalking some competitors for a few years. It's a sport that requires an immense amount of discipline it's a sport that has very little room for error as you stand posing and flexing on stage in a really small, small amount of fabric in a bikini. It took dedication, determination, tracking ounces of food and water and hours in the gym. And when that season progressed, I fell in love with the process. Things that became hard became easier. One show became two, became three, became four. And even though I don't compete in that arena any longer, I know how to flip that switch on because I created not just mindset pillars, but also action pillars. This would be visiting a day in Alice's life. I wanna share with you some of the strategies that I use daily to be able to stay strong in my habits, to be able to create confidence that allows me to pursue my goals with more ease and with more passion. I have notebooks everywhere. It is effective for me to write everything down. 
when I was learning to compete as a bodybuilder, I had an app that I tracked everything that my body did, ate, or drank in. I find that writing down those thoughts, those action steps, create this total sensory experience. I think it, I feel it as I write it, I see it, and I will tell you that Google Calendar is my boss, and I commit all of the activities that are my focus for the day to my calendar. That might support you as well. I also know my process, and I wanna share with you how I created this speech. I give speeches quite often, and it takes the most energy for me to begin. So I used a portion of this speech from a previous talk I gave. It allowed me to have a starting point, and then I used my most creative energy, which occurs between 7 and 10 a.m. for me, to write the majority of this speech. When I could see the end, where I could see I finish, see the finish line, I was like, game on, because I finish better than anyone else. Circle back to that journaling, to finding your process and falling in love with it. Creating visual cues. Just this morning, here are a few I use. Doing laundry, because I'm working from home, I close the door to the laundry room to know that there will be laundry in the washing machine to move in the dryer. As I woke this morning, I pair my second cup of coffee with my supplements so I don't forget. Second cup of coffee, supplements. I look for ways to pair twos and threes of action together. Have you ever gone to bed and forgotten to charge your phone or set your alarm? I pair them together so that I am aware my alarm is set for the time I want to wake and my phone is charging. This also works when you go to the grocery store. We don't buy just one battery or one light bulb. They don't even rarely sell them that way. We buy things in pairs that could stop our lives if we only had one or we ran out. And last in the success difference between those two stories was community. In the first example, I launched those three new behaviors all by myself, thinking I could change my wake-up time, my exercise routine, and my ability to learn a foreign language by myself. When I chose to set a fitness goal and compete as a bodybuilder, I had a coach, I had a community, and they supported me. You may have a community in your world, maybe a business mastermind, power partners, a personal trainer or a business coach, or a Facebook group. I want to end with inviting you to be part of my community. On Facebook, you'll find Forever Fabulous, a group dedicated to being fabulous regardless of your age. In fact, I want to change the mindset of the world to see women as we get older as more powerful, more confident, for sure wiser, and more beautiful. You can join me at Forever Fabulous as well as alicerothbauer.com, my personal website, and you can learn more about me and how to work with me there. Thank you, Don.